Hey YouTube, I'm not even sure what to call this video, uh, but we have what I hope is a fun project today. Because it involves this, a pistol crossbow. How can you go wrong starting out like this? Now why in the world do I have the cheapest pistol crossbow that they sell on Amazon? Simple, I have a tree to shoot. Okay, well technically I don't wanna shoot the tree. What I wanna do is I wanna shoot over the tree with a fishing line. Why? So I can use that fishing line to haul a rope, which I can then use to haul an antenna. Specifically what's called an NFED random wire antenna. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to the antenna part, but for right now, let's get this thing out of the box. All right, some assembly required here. This is the cross piece of the crossbow, and this is the pistol base. Now the way this goes in here is there is an Allen screw in the very front that uh, just press fits this against the pistol housing. So I gotta back that screw out enough to get this thing in here. But it doesn't go in just as is. There are two rubber pads right here which go front and back as well as a metal pressure plate which goes in the front and has a little dimple that faces forward and that's what the set screw locks into. It is pretty important to get this thing centered in here um, because it's got about 80 pounds of draw and that will wear the plastic on the front of this thing pretty badly if you get it in there uneven. When you're tightening up the set screw, go for a good balance between ridiculously tight and it ain't going nowhere. Next is to install these little plastic caps on the ends of the bow. They have tabs on them, which according to the picture are supposed to point forward. Then the fun part, putting the string on. You slide it over the plastic tab on one end, make sure it goes behind the cocking mechanism, and then you gotta lean on it. It has a built-in cocking mechanism that uh, unlatches from the back of here, and as long as you have something to lean the crossbow up against in the front, relatively easily pulls that string back. Full disclaimer here, this thing is not a toy. Uh, it looks like a toy, it kind of feels like a toy, but these bolts, they're sharp. And even just the 80 pound draw, which is not frankly that big as these crossbows go, um, is enough to do some serious damage. All right, so be careful with this thing. Don't go shooting your eye out. Of course, our ultimate goal is not to destroy plywood, it's to get an antenna in the air. And that means we're gonna need some sort of a line to attach to the bolt on this gun. Enter old fishing reel. Um, this is not, by any stretch of the imagination, a great fishing reel, uh, but it will work fine for these purposes. What it does have that's important is an open bale, so there's absolutely the least amount of restriction to the line leaving, and it has a pretty sizable spool capacity. So I could load it up with, in this case, 30 pound test high-vis line and still have quite a bit on there. I'm just gonna use wire ties for right now. Um, if this works, then I'll do something a little bit more substantial, but uh, if it doesn't, I wanna be able to get this thing off of here and uh, still have a crossbow to play with. Okay, well that's easy enough. The real trick is how am I gonna make this an effective carrier for the end of that line? There's two problems here. One, I have to attach that line to the dart somehow, and realistically, it needs to attach back here in the back so that the dart can drag it along rather than being thrown off kilter. Uh, so I'm just gonna drill a hole in this plastic fin in the back and straight up tie the fishing line to the back of the dart. Okay, after the trip to the drill press, we can get to work on fixing the other serious problem here, which is the light weight of these bolts. The tips, fortunately, are just threaded in removable tips. So uh, you can take that off and get access to the hollow center goodness of this aluminum tube. Now, if you've gone crazy and bought yourself a 300 pound draw crossbow, uh, you're gonna have to track down some lead and melt it and fill this thing up and possibly turn a new point made of lead and thread that in here. But uh, fortunately for the little 80 pounder that we've got, I don't have to go to anywhere near those lengths. In fact, 
I only went to my kid's room <laughs> and stole the little sand art project that she made, Lord knows when, but it's lost the lid long ago, lost some of the sand, and uh, it's all mixed up, so we might as well put it to good use here. I made myself a little paper funnel here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and absolutely plumb fill this bolt with sand. Um, in fact, I'm gonna overfill it. I'm gonna fill it until the sand is up to where the threads for the point go, because I don't want the sand moving around and I wanna get as much weight in there as possible. So I'm gonna use this point to compress the sand down into the shaft of the bolt. But of course, the sand is only sort of kind of compressible. Um, so I'm gonna have to take a little bit back out, but this process is easier than trying to get just the right amount in. Uh, so put in too much, try to screw in the tip. If you can't get it all the way in, then you have to take a little bit of sand out. But if it just barely goes like this did, you're perfect. You're full and your sand is nice and tight. It's not gonna shift around on you. Final construction step is to tie our freshly weighted bolt onto the end of the fishing line. I used a knot called a non-slip mono loop. Um, I think you want the ability for this line to kind of flap in the breeze without necessarily tugging quite so hard on the dart. So, lock and load as they say. It's a little bit unfortunate that you have to uh, load the dart with the bow cocked, but such is life. Just be careful while you're in there. Don't get your fingers in front of the point of the uh, bolt while, you're, while the thing is loaded. And voila, one ready to fire antenna launcher. Uh, let's take this thing out in the yard, find a tree and give it a shot. Okay, locked and loaded and the bale is open. So we are ready to take a test shot at this tree right here. Fail. So what actually happened there is my fishing line is really old. <laughs> it's twisted up and curled up. It's a real nightmare coming off of the reel. So I'm gonna try it again with the line already off the reel. Um, if you're not using old windy, twisty, crappy line. This may not happen to you. Anyway, take two. Success! And that right there is the extra good thing. The dart seems to be heavy enough. It's pulling the line down. All right, YouTube, here is my random wire antenna. It is 84 feet of, uh, I forget what gauge, thermostat wire that I have, uh, I had to strip three pieces and solder them together to get 84 feet, but here it is. Nine to one ballon on the end of this. Uh, that's another video, how to make one of these, but trust me, it's easy. Which gives me coax connector off to the wire. I should have left myself a couple of extra inches on the end of this wire because I've got to fold it back and twist it up. So I'm effectively shortening my wire by, uh, by two inches here. But out of 84 feet, I don't think it's gonna matter. This half of the operation is a whole lot easier if you're not working with a pine tree and you can see the wire on the other side, but uh, that feels pretty snug, so I'm just going to tie it off to this little table down here and call it a day. No substitute for height with an antenna, so I'm putting this thing up as far as I can. Okay, and here's the final antenna. Running out. So the antenna is up. I checked it out, it works, made a couple of contacts. Uh, I did shoot some footage of checking the SWR and the contacts and everything. You can leave some comments down below if you're interested in seeing that. Maybe I can crank out a part two of this. Um, but this is the star of the day. Final thoughts? It works, gets the job done. And unlike the pneumatic launchers, uh, this one, you get as many shots as you need, even if you're out in the boonies someplace far, far away from a compressor. Couple of areas for improvement. Uh, the choice of line was terrible. Uh, do not use five year old 30 pound test catfish line. The visibility is good, uh, but the flexibility and the memory are totally, totally awful. Um, so I'm gonna go out and get myself some maybe 15 or 20 pound test braided line, should be nice and soft, should last a long time and, and not give me the fits that this stuff does. 
Uh, the other thing I think I'm gonna change is the wire ties are gonna get replaced with hose clamps. Uh, I do still like the idea of having this fishing reel being removable from the crossbow, um, but the wire ties are just a little bit too wiggly because there's not a good mechanical fit between these two things. So uh, some hose clamps should fix that right up. And clearly I only tried this one weight of dart and I think it's fine, I think it's heavy enough. Um, but I also think heavier would probably work better. Um, so if you know you're gonna be in the wind or you have heavier than 80 pound draw, you probably are gonna wanna find lead BBs or go the melt actual lead route. You're gonna wanna do something to make this bolt even heavier than what I've done with the sand. All in all, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out and how well it works. I uh, can't wait to get myself up on a summit or possibly in a park someplace to do an activation and, and see how it works. Uh, one note about that, before you go taking a crossbow pistol into your local county or state park, uh, make sure you know what the rules about weaponry are in there. Um, even if you've replaced the sharp point with uh, something blunt, um, this probably still qualifies as a weapon and uh, an antenna is not worth getting yourself arrested over. Other than that, any questions, leave them down below. Think about hitting that subscribe button while you're down there. And as always, especially if you're gonna play with crossbows, stay safe, YouTube.